Epilogue Thank you, everyone, for coming today. Anne smiled tremulously. We've been very grateful to everyone for supporting us, for being determined to find proof of the truth, for giving us some time after Michael's release. You're all very dear to our hearts, and that's why we've asked you to come to celebrate today with us. There was some applause before she continued. We especially want to thank people that we had not truly considered family until this hardship. That was wrong of us, and we fully wish to call you a part of our family. Drew Colburn for his help with convincing the FBI to investigate Agent Law's activities, and Molson Colburn for finding proof of Michael's innocence and bringing it forward so that justice could be served. We have a plaque on our wall where the part of the quote says, A brother is born for adversity. Michael and I went through a very difficult, adverse time. Drew and Molson, you're brothers to us. Anne tucked herself against Michael's side. Amy has been helping Michael to practice all week for this, so please be patient. Michael cleared his throat. He opened his mouth to speak, then shook his head ruefully. Anne whispered something to him, and he tried again. Thank you. Everyone clapped, and Fen Lee declared dinner ready as she wiped her eyes. People took their places at the long tables that had been set out in the sand of the beach for the outdoor gathering. He can speak, Molson commented quietly, a little surprised. The trouble is not necessarily speaking, Max explained. The trouble is that he can't usually control what he says when he can say something. The words get mixed up or substituted with other words. The good news is that all our secrets are safe with him. Paget had a smile. I don't believe we've been introduced to your friend. Holly, this is Paget and Max. Molson made the introductions. Pleased to meet you, smiled Holly. She had been surprised and pleased when Molson had invited her along to the celebration for Michael's release. He had told Holly that without her, he would never have gotten the final idea of how to convince the gangs to turn on David. Therefore, she simply had to come. Plus, it would be nice if he could basically cower behind her. Holly did not believe that he was cowering for a moment. He was a little overwhelmed at times by all the thanks he was receiving from the Ramsley family. But not once was he cowering. Molson did hold her hand a lot. She felt it was just an excuse. Not that Holly was complaining. She was not going to complain one bit. She also loved how Molson interacted with little Amy, and how Anne let them hold the babies. Holly was a sucker for babies. More than that, Holly was a sucker for Molson holding a baby. It put an urge in her to create a miracle of their own. However, not just yet. Carefully observing Drew and Bethany together, she decided her friend had made the right choice. It was obvious that the pair were in love. Holly had never enjoyed herself more, meeting new people and having dinner on the beach at the ocean side. It was perfect. She smiled at Molson, thinking how lucky she was. Everyone chatted amicably as they ate. Everett Ramsley stood in the doorway of the beach house, arms crossed looking down on the proceedings. He noted Jake and Sterling, Dylan and Kelly, each enjoying celebrating the moment. Jake and Dylan had always been closer to their cousins than Everett had. "'All is well that ends well,' a female voice said beside him. "'No,' grimaced Everett. "'It has not ended well. "'It will not be over until David Ramsley's found and admits that he coerced my father into this mess.' "'He's not going to be easy to find,' she told him. "'He has hidden accounts with lots of money in them.' He has criminal connections as well as a lot of powerful friends who might be willing to help or hide him. That doesn't matter. Everett looked at her. I'll pay whatever is necessary. Good, she gave him a mercenary smile, because my services do not come cheap. Find out what happens next in pursuit of a billionaire. Everett Ramsley was determined to find on the run David Ramsley. His uncle may hold the key to getting his father, Robert, out of prison. Everett can't do it alone, but he can hire someone who has a reputation of getting her man. Bounty hunter Aubrey Henson has tracked down the most elusive criminals. She was not about to let an octogenarian get the best of her. What she hadn't counted on was Everett wanting to come along for the chase. 
Bree's not used to working with anyone, let alone a handsome rich boy who knows nothing about roughing it when necessary. From booby traps to bad flight connections, Everett and Bree are spending a lot of time together, enough to make Bree wonder if she was in pursuit of the right billionaire. Find it on Amazon.